By speaking at the National Prescription Drug Abuse and Heroin Summit, President Barack Obama hoped to draw attention to his shift in policy regarding the war on drugs here in the U.S. Uh, in essence, what Obama hopes to achieve is a change in the way that we deal with Americans who are suffering from drug addiction. Uh, we shouldn't throw them in jail. We should probably invest more heavily in providing treatment for them. I happen to agree with that. Uh, quote, for too long, we viewed drug addiction through the lens of criminal justice. The most important thing to do is to reduce demand, and the only way to do that is to provide treatment, to see it as a public health problem and not a criminal problem. So earlier in the day, right before that summit, Obama had basically announced some new measures, uh, committing $116 million to support treatment uh, with nine actions that include expanding access to care and drugs for combating uh, overdoses here in the U.S., um, not crime fighting, right? That's the key there, not crime fighting. So just to give you a few examples here, um, 271 community health centers that could expand uh, throughout a lot of areas that wouldn't normally have these services, that could uh, bring services to 124,000 new patients. That is huge. Uh, the plan also included $11 million for states to distribute naloxone, which is a drug that basically um, reverses opioid overdoses. Mm -hmm. So we see a lot of those. That's just two of the nine different things that this bill would cover. Um, so I think it's really important. And he brings up a really, really good point. I mean, criminalizing these people, throwing them in jail isn't a solution. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that that costs us money, right? So it's this, this never ending loop. They're going to get out of jail. They're going to go back to drugs again. And it's not helping the problem. It's just making things worse. I think if we if we kind of treat them more like human beings and extend our arm and we, we, we see more, we see more uh, services is facilitated by the state, you might see more people coming out and getting treatment because a lot of times it's taboo. People don't want to go and, and, and check themselves into these places because it's embarrassing. It's, it's, it's weird. You don't want to go do it. So you'll, you'll, you'll keep on doing drugs and you'll keep, you know, your life's going to keep going down the drain. So I think if we see more services like this, I think we'll see more people opening up to the idea of going out, reaching out for help. Uh, so definitely jail to me doesn't seem like the right way out. We're seeing a shift in the national narrative that the severity of addiction, it's, it, it's an illness, it's not a criminal act, and it's good that the president's finally getting on board with that. I know that his drug policy in the past, um, he's, he's leaned toward this, but coming out and saying it, um, it it's, it's very refreshing. You know, as something that I've, I've found annoying for a long time, the past three presidents admitted drug users never faced a criminal act or issue for, for so using wealthy drugs. Wealthy white people. Right, so, well, if you're, if you're affluent or if you have some power authority, you're never going to see a criminal prosecution for drugs. So th this very much is a war on poor people in this country. And I'm really relieved to see states like Kentucky, they, they have something before their, their house right now that is a, a piece of legislation that says we're going to expunge your record for nonviolent offenders, giving them a second chance. Because if you get slapped with a drug crime and you're convicted, put in jail, your life's over. Your life's over, right? And then, and then that goes back to what I was saying, this endless, this never-ending mm -hmm. spiraling effect mm -hmm. of you just being down at the bottom for the rest right. of your life because of one issue that you have. And that's why we need to deal with it as a health problem, mm -hmm. not a criminal problem. And that, I think that's so important. So Kentucky, cool. Let's take it on to like a very extreme level. Now you look at a country like Portugal, which has taken extreme measures, uh, probably as, as extreme as you can go, referring to drugs. They've basically decriminalized everything, weed, mm -hmm. cocaine, heroin, you name it. Um, so what they do now, basically, instead of throwing everybody in jail, they put them in these programs and they, 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 they try to rehabilitate people. Basically, now what you see is hardly anyone over o ODing in Portugal anymore. The numbers have gone down drastically. We see people, uh, like I said, it, it being taboo. People are coming out, feel more comfortable getting treatment because there's more money being put into these services and they're more readily available. And I think that's very important. Now, I'm not saying we need to go and legalize every single drug. Uh, that's a very extreme case that worked in a smaller country like Portugal. We're a very big big country with different borders, different countries, so I understand that that won't necessarily work here if we were to just do that. But it is a good indicator that if you if you move in that direction, you see the lowering of things like drug use as well as overdoses subsequently. So I think it's very, very important to see Obama coming out and, and, and asking Americans to basically change their views uh, on the way that we look at drugs and drug users in this country. Thanks, Obama.